Fuck. So uh, staying with, with the medical field, uh, new research is coming out of, and we've talked about it before, the fMRI program. Yeah, an fMRI is, is an MRI machine with, a, with a, a little screen, and there's a speaker, and there's a microphone, and you're able then to, to read what the brain is doing in real time, and you can show pictures. And what's fascinating, this is the new data that's coming out, is they've been doing men and women, you know, kind of just running them through various batteries of tests for years now. Information I'm reading just in the last week, although it may have been published as far back as a few months ago, says that it turns out if you show a man, a man, a picture of like hammers and saws and nails, mm -hmm. a very particular part of the brain lights up, that part that's devoted to usefulness and practicality, and I'm going to use this thing to make something amazing. Well, if you show a man a picture of a pretty woman, mm -hmm. all of a sudden the language center pops open, all of a sudden the amygdala and, and the parts that have to do with compassion and excitement and interest pop open. The whole brain just kind of lights up in different areas. Very interesting. So you show the same man a picture of the same woman head to toe in a fancy dress. Mm -hmm. The same thing. Same parts of the brain light up. You show the same man the same woman in a bikini. All of those parts of the brain turn off. Huh. And the part that deals with hammers and nails turns back on. Huh. Really? And so immediately the man stops seeing the woman as a person and starts to see her as a tool to be used. Mm. Wow. That's what we've seen. And it's one of those things I started my sermon with this this weekend saying, you know, good science always proves the church is telling the truth. Yeah. And, and this is one of the things now Kathleen has been talking about, about modest dress for several weeks. Yep. And so it's just kind of one of those interesting things where, I came across an article this week from the Catholic gentleman about custody of the eyes. And, of course, for ladies, the way to deal with modesty is to dress modestly and, and to love themselves enough and care about themselves enough and care about us men enough, you know, to, to cover themselves. And mothers, mothers have got to stop buying bikinis for their five-year-old yeah. or their eight-year-old. That's just despicable. Yeah. Um, it's got to end. But for guys, mm -hmm. we don't really have control over what, ladies wear and what they don't. And so the custody of the eyes is an old way of saying, you know, on the one hand, we have to take control of the easy stuff. What I put on my TV screen, what mm -hmm. I put on my movie screen, and what I allow on my internet computer screen, right. I can control that. You know, yep. I mean, I don't have to watch Channel 5. I don't have to watch HBO. I don't have to know what's going to happen on Game of Thrones. So I can control that. Then... For those things I can't control, I have to start working on the mental habit of looking at the faces of ladies who might not be dressed as modestly as they should be. And even if that means in an awkward way, forcing myself to pretend they don't have a body below the neck, yeah. you know, that's what I've got to do. Hmm. And as we learn how to take control of our eyes in this way, eventually our whole, you know, spiritual life kind of develops into seeing this as a person instead of seeing this as a tool. Because remember, every guy is every guy. You know, I try very hard to be chaste and pure, but I walk outside and there's some, you know, beautiful woman walking by, you know, in a, with a taut body in a bikini. My brain turns off and I start turning on to how do I use this person? Because yeah. it's, it's what every human being, every man does this naturally. Yep. And so we have to develop the skill of looking from the neck up and saying this is the part that evokes the images I need to see about compassion, interest, etc. And I need to learn and train myself to ignore what may be devastating below the neck. And that seems nasty and terrible and disgusting and, and blah, but that's just what a man owes a woman. Just as yeah. that woman owes that man modest dress, the man owes the woman custody of the eyes. So it's a neat article, and it's a good thing to remember, especially in the summertime. And as it turns out, Father, this this notion of custody of the eyes, I mean, uh, whether you're, you're getting proof of it on the fMRI or not, uh, it's it's just good common sense. I mean, you know, the the notion of uh, of of using women as objects and now even m women using men as objects is nothing new. There is nothing new under the sun, and that is why custody of the eyes, this this notion that uh, is kind of becoming popular again on on blogs, is really just a restatement of practicing the virtues, right? Yeah, I think it's exactly what it is. Yeah, and, and we realize that uh, whenever we practice virtue, when we practice uh, the, the, those important ways in which we are aiming towards the Lord and not towards our own will, we actually then begin to cultivate the fruits of the Spirit. Those begin to be born in us. It's kind of like the gospel for this past weekend, where if the seed is sown on good soil, mm 
Mm-hmm. The soil, the, the the soil of our hearts is cultivated by practicing virtue, by custody of the eyes, by by uh, placing ourselves in, in the occasion of grace instead of the occasion of sin. What begins to happen is we begin to bear great fruit, a hundred or sixty or thirty fold, and we actually can begin to find our lives transformed. And there can come, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Father. There can come a time where we actually do not by knee-jerk, see the woman as object, but we want to see her as subject. You know, there can come that right. time. There can come that time where, where grace is so abounding in our lives where it is, it is the child of God that we see and not an object to be used. Yeah, I agree. That's, that's the, certainly the, uh, the plan that, that everybody needs to work toward um, because that's what we as human beings need to train ourselves to be masters of our emotion and not just be animalistic, not just give in to the natural tendencies. And, uh, you know, the fMRI tells us what our natural tendency is, and so this gives us now a benchmark to say, I can do better. Yep. If I'm a real man and I'm a Christian man, I can do better. That's right. And uh, as you say, Father, in, in the show notes, um, practicing our prayers is very, very important too, right? Uh, the rosary is, a, is an important help. Um, uh, the sacramental life is certainly an important help. Uh, I, I tell young men especially, don't be afraid to go to confession. If you have trouble with purity especially, don't be afraid to go to confession and don't think that, oh, Father, here I am again. Father's not going to want to see me. No, no, God always wants to see you. Mm-hmm. Always. Amen. He, he always wants you back, especially if you're in the confessional. So don't be afraid, uh, young men. And don't be afraid, young women, either, um, because we know the world in which we live is is getting to be a— a lot more objectified place uh, uh, for the life of women as well. So don't be afraid to go to the confessional. It takes a while, but it does, in fact, get easier over time if we begin to cultivate the soil um, with grace and not with vice.